The video you are about to watch contains health answers that most doctors are not willing to talk about and don't want you to know. You or someone you love may be suffering with health problems such as digestion problems, weight gain, headaches, and even low energy. Today you will find the cause of most of these health problems that are robbing you and your loved ones of good health. Here today to educate you on this vital topic is Dr. Joel Robbins. Dr. Robbins is a medical doctor, a chiropractor, and a naturopathic physician. He has treated over 100,000 patients and has been in practice for over 20 years. Dr. Joel Robbins has written several books on health and wellness. He lectures around the country and has been a guest on many talk shows. In fact, the United States Air Force called him to Washington to help them improve the health of their pilots. Dr. Joel Robbins is a true living example of someone who walks his talk. At the age of 47, he still looks like he is in his 30s. Please pay close attention now as he shares with you today the major cause of most of you and your family's health concerns. In traditional medicine, and unfortunately in complementary health care, we look at the symptom and we say, all right, with that symptom, this diagnosis, what remedy do we give? Is it a drug? Is it surgery? Is it an herb? Is it colonic therapy, acupuncture? What is it? But we fail to ask the primary question, the basic question, which is, what is the cause? If you have a headache and you go to the doctor, he prescribes aspirin, you take the aspirin, your headache goes away, what would logic tell you as to the cause of your headache? Well, that's simple, aspirin deficiency. And yet, there is no such thing. We do not get a headache due to a salicylic acid deficiency. We haven't asked what the cause is. This is like hearing the fire alarm go off in your home and you run up and find the wires to the fire alarm and cut the wire and think, okay, I don't hear the fire alarm anymore, therefore, there's no more fire. That's ridiculous. The problem with not looking at causes is that while we're getting relief, we continue to poison the body, we begin, we continue to weaken it, and ultimately we end up with some disease process. I believe the number one cause of health problems is auto-intoxication. Auto meaning self, intoxication meaning poisoning. We poison ourselves by our faulty lifestyle. Yes, most of the time out of ignorance. What is the most common cause of auto-intoxication? It's poor bowel function or poor colon health. Oh, come on, you say. That's ridiculous. Well, let me tell you something. There are medical studies that say otherwise. Here are some very interesting facts about our colon. This first one comes from Dr. Anthony Bazier, a professor of gastroenterology in New York, concluded after a 25-year study of over 5,000 cases that every physician should realize that the intestinal toxins are the most important primary and contributing causes of many disorders and health problems of the human body. That's profound. When I went to medical school, chiropractic school, even naturopathic school, I was not taught about the relationship between colon health and physical problems. That is sad. But after 20 plus years of clinical experience and also the hundreds of medical studies, we now know better. The health of the colon does make a difference. In this video, we're going to learn how poor colon health can lead to serious health problems. We're going to learn what auto-intoxication is, what causes it, and what we can do about it. Many of you are hurting, many of you are frustrated, you have health problems you're not finding answers for. Just listen up. We're going to give you hope. There is a solution. To understand auto-intoxication, and its relationship to colon health and our health, we need to have a quick anatomy lesson. Let's look at the digestive system. Digestion begins in the mouth. As we chew our food, saliva mixes with the food. Saliva contains some enzymes that begin the process of digesting that food. We swallow the food, it goes down into the stomach where digestion continues. From there, the food goes into the small intestine where digestion finishes up and then food is absorbed through the villi in the small intestine. After digestion, after absorption, the food is passed on into the large intestine and becomes fecal matter. It goes across the transverse to descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and out through the rectum. Here's a diagram of your small intestine. It is about 25 feet in length and approximately the width of your thumb. On the close-up here, we see what are called villi. These are finger-like projections through which nutrition is absorbed into the bloodstream to nourish the body. Now eating toxic food, junk food can cause 
a film to build up over these villi which will hinder the absorption of nutrition into the body. And it really doesn't matter how many supplements you take, not going to get the benefit of your money. In this diagram, we're observing the normal movement of food through the small intestine, and then it becomes fecal matter in the large intestine, going out in a timely fashion, one meal in, one bowel movement out. In this diagram, we're observing a sluggish bowel in which several meals are backed up in the large intestine, which is the result of constipation and certainly produces toxic bowel syndrome. You're supposed to have two to three bowel movements a day if you're eating two to three meals a day. The bowel movements should be effortless, odorless, and well-formed, and leave you with a feeling of satisfaction and cleanliness when you're finished. Dr. Norman Walker, who by the way died at the age of 109, was one of the foremost pioneers in colon health. He stated that out of 100,000 autopsies that he had attended, there were less than 10% normal colons. Dr. William Hunter said, the colon is the sewer system of the body, but with neglect and abuse it becomes a cesspool of toxins that spill over into the body. Let me tell you the true definition of regularity. If you eat a meal, you have a bowel movement. You eat three meals a day, you should have three bowel movements a day, just like a baby. You feed a baby, 20 minutes later it has a bowel movement. So let me ask you a question. If you're eating three meals a day, but you're having just one bowel movement a day, or maybe one bowel movement every 10 days, as some patients tell me, sometimes once every two weeks, believe it or not. Question, what's happening to that food? What's it doing to our body? You're about to find out. Here's a diagram of the normal colon. Notice the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid, and rectum. Look at this example of how toxic a colon is. Look at the cross-section of the colon, only leaving a small passageway to eliminate. This waste builds up, causes poisons, which are then absorbed into the body. This is what happens to our colon when we ignore the body's urgings to have regular bowel movements. Let me ask you a question. What would happen if you were to put a hamburger in a Ziploc bag and left it in your kitchen counter, what would it smell like after a week? Or even worse, what would it smell like after several years? This is what's going to take place in our bodies if we are not eliminating properly. Here are some actual x-rays of people with colon problems. Notice the white areas, that's the colon. Notice how distorted, how prolapsed, convoluted these sick colons are. Serious health consequences are going to result as a result of these colons that are not healthy. In this diagram, we see what's known as a spastic colon. This is the result of stress. See how the colon is contracted in spasm. Obviously, this will hinder bowel function. This is a direct consequence of stress. This certainly sets the stage for serious health consequences as this fecal matter remains in the colon for years. One of the most serious consequences of not taking care of a colon is something called a colostomy. And this is where the surgeons remove the colon and the bowel matter passes out through a hole in the abdomen into a sac. Let's spend some time talking about a major health problem in this country and that of weight problems. According to the Surgeon General, over 61 percent of the adult population is overweight. That's awful. That's tragic. There are several factors relating to toxic colon that can contribute directly to weight problem. Toxic accumulation in the bowel. As I've said before, the colon can expand up to five times its normal size. This swells up because of the toxic waste that's not being eliminated in a timely fashion. This leads to that condition, megacolon. This is the enlarged colon. Dr. Jack Lemire, a naturopath and a homeopath, said, most people are walking around with at least seven pounds of fecal matter in their large intestine. And I have seen patients lose that much weight and their tummy bulge following colon therapy. Nutritionist Lindsay Duncan agrees that a clean colon aids in digestion and the ability to metabolize food. I quote, they think it's normal to have a bowel movement once every few days. I often startle my clients with the question, if we eat three meals daily, but only eliminate once a day or once every other day, where do you think all the 
rest of that food is hiding. I want you to imagine not taking your garbage out. Every day you have new trash, it goes in the garbage can, that garbage can gets filled up, you have another one, you fill it up. Imagine not taking your garbage out for a week. How about two weeks? How about a year? What's going to happen? What's it going to smell like? What I'm describing is the result of rotting food in the intestine because it's either not being digested properly or there's not adequate bowel function so the food just sits there and it rots. As a consequence there is toxic chemicals formed. These toxic chemicals unfortunately will absorb into the body and they begin to poison our system. Here's a diagram of what is known as a prolapsed colon. This is a consequence of fecal matter not being eliminated from the bowel on a timely basis. The weight of that fecal matter causing the bowel to drop or prolapse. When that colon hits the lower part of the abdomen, it's going to put undue pressure on the structures there. Bladder, perhaps prostate in the male, and in the female, the uterus and the female organs causing consequences in those areas. Here's a picture of the normal anatomy of the female abdomen. Notice the uterus, the ovaries, and then the colon. When the colon prolapses, it's going to put pressure on the uterus. Some of the consequences of prolapsed colon can cause female infections, cysts, and even struggles with reproduction. Here's a view of the male anatomy of the lower abdomen. Notice the proximity of the colon to the bladder and the prostate. Some of the consequences can be prostate problems, reproductive problems, even lowered sex drive. Did you know, according to the Mayo Clinic, over 60 million Americans experience heartburn on a regular basis. What's so amazing is that heartburn, indigestion, and even acid reflux are common symptoms of a toxic colon. Yet, we keep ignoring the actual cause. To understand the full consequence of both toxic bowel syndrome and constipation, or auto-intoxication, we need to understand the main systems of elimination. There are five main avenues of waste elimination from the body. The first avenue of elimination is the colon. Another condition that can result of toxic bowel syndrome is called megacolon. Now, megacolon is when the colon of normal size expands up to five times its normal size. This is simply due to poor bowel function, not eliminating on a timely basis. As a consequence, the toxic debris sits in the colon for days, perhaps, and weeks, we don't know. You know this person who's got the big gut, skinny legs, you ever look at that and wonder what's going on there? Now you know. How about halitosis, bad breath? That's another consequence of toxic bowel syndrome. This is where the toxins absorb into the body and they're exhaled through our lungs. So that brings us to the next avenue of elimination, which is the liver. The liver is designed to filter the blood. If the colon becomes plugged up and we have this rotting material, it's got to overflow somewhere. The liver is the first one to get it. And we have certain symptoms that can result from that. For example, headaches. This is simply the brain crying out because it doesn't like this toxic blood that the liver is not filtering. Low energy. We can even have memory problems because if the blood is toxic, we don't think as well. Lowered sex drive, cholesterol problems. The liver is the primary gatekeeper of the blood fats. And if it's congested, it can struggle to maintain our cholesterol level. Even joint problems. And the next line of defense is the kidneys. Since the colon, the first line of defense, is not able to handle it, then somebody else has to. So now we have the kidneys are overloaded. Going to have kidney problems. Consequence of that can be blood pressure problems. Even low back pain. What's the next avenue of elimination? The lungs. The lungs can also get in on the act of having to deal with some of these toxins. We already mentioned bad breath. How about asthma, allergies, even our skin? The skin is one of the largest organs of waste elimination of the body. But if the colon's backed up and the liver's backed up, the skin becomes a relief valve for the liver and for the kidneys. And so we're going to have skin problems, all a consequence of poor bowel function. Let's see a question. If you're taking a bath or a shower every day to keep the outside clean, why wouldn't you want to keep the inside clean too? It just makes sense. This whole auto-intoxication process can lead to premature aging, never mind disease. Remember, we age from the inside out, not the outside in. 
If you want to stay young and healthy, simply apply the principles of health that I've outlined in this video. As a doctor and being in practice for over 20 years, I can tell you these principles work, and now I am sharing them with you. I apply them myself, and I reap the health benefits. Here I am, age 47, and people still think I'm in my 30s. It does work. The responsibility for your health is up to you. Take that responsibility. No one else can do that for you. Get started on the products. Take the other action steps outlined in this video. You've been armed with the truth. What you do with it is up to you. The choice is yours. Remember, health is a gift. Disease is something that we earn.